When you hear the words audio amplifier, you probably imagine things that look like these pictures. They are all different types of audio amplifiers, but they all do the same basic thing. They make audio frequency signals more powerful. While designing amplifiers like these is fun, it is far beyond the scope of this introductory course. What we'll focus on instead is an application-specific IC, the LM386. Like with the variety of digital ICs that we saw in the Introduction to Digital Electronics course, there are a ton of analog ICs available that all do different specific things, mainly amplifying and filtering. This LM386 is an all-in-one low-voltage audio power amplifier and it is capable of amplifying audio signals by 20 to 200 times. Inside the datasheet of this IC, we can see a clear explanation of all features and intended applications for this IC, as well as a high-level circuit diagram of what is inside the IC. The most important part of the LM386 datasheet is the typical applications section. Most datasheets will have this section, and it is very important because it gives examples of how to use the IC. The examples are typically very well tested by the manufacturer of the IC, so they can be considered accurate and reliable. For our audio amplifier, we want to use as few parts as possible, but still have an amplifier that works. The top two typical applications offer this to us with one producing an audio amplification gain of 20 and the other 200. Both of these circuits will work for us, but let's choose the gain equals 20 circuit since it is the easiest to construct. Since the analog parts kit doesn't have a few of the parts seen in the circuit, we'll modify it to look like this so we can build it up and still get an amplification gain of 20. In this experiment, we'll build up this LM386 audio amplifier circuit and test it out with the sound card oscilloscope and a pair of headphones so we can hear the differences. To build this circuit, we'll need a breadboard, jumper wire kit, and from the analog parts kit, the stereo cable with exposed wires, a 9 volt battery connector, an audio jack breakout board, an LM386 IC 10 nanofarad capacitor, and two 100 microfarad capacitors. Now let's start building up the circuit according to the schematic. We'll go step by step and build up the circuit in bypass mode first, and later in the experiment, we'll rewire the circuit to include the amplifier. With the circuit built up, we'll power it on and turn on the sound card oscilloscope so that it outputs a ramping sound from 50 Hz to 10 kHz. Now, let's move the two capacitors in the circuit so that the amplifier is no longer bypassed. With that 
change, you can definitely hear that the amplifier made the ramping sound a good deal louder. Try changing the laptop's volume or inputting real music into the amplifier and see the effect. There are literally hundreds of thousands of ICs that perform analog filtering or amplification to signals, but most are not general purpose. Some are for wireless, RF, power, or microwave. Others like we saw here today are for audio signals. Don't be shy. Go visit a manufacturer's website like Texas Instruments and explore to see what types of analog ICs they have and what they do. All parts in this online course were provided by the Gadgetory. Visit them at gadgetory.com slash pyroedu. Pat yourself on the back if you made it through these 10 lessons. Analog electronics is a challenging subject to undertake, but the knowledge you gain can be very rewarding. We hope you enjoyed this introduction to analog electronics course. Thanks for watching.